Peace and Power back live with Radio Radio uh, on UrbanNationRadio.com. Be sure to uh, check out our Radio Radio page, R-E-A-D-Y-O, Radio, R-A-D-I-O, on Facebook. We'll be posting the uh, clips of this uh, this week's episode in, uh, in parts to the uh, Facebook page, as well as uh, download the app, Urban Nation Radio. Um, from the Google Play Store or the App Store. And so uh, before we left, we were talking about uh, self-interest, and I gave a brief definition. Uh, but th this is, and I'll read the definition again for those who, um, since I kind of said it fast, self-interest. One's personal interest or advantage, especially when pursued without regard for others. So this is kind of types into, ties into what, Malcolm X is talking about by by any means necessary. Um, you know, when when I want to say when immigrants we use that example a lot, but it it's it's a pl it applies. When uh, immigrants, most immigrants come to this country, they identify or then their research or maybe they got a word from their family members sent sent for them, and they they align with people who they have self interest with, and and it just goes back to this definition. Um, uh, especially with uh, without disregard for, for for others, so they they're not really concerned about um, anybody that doesn't have their interests. Their primary objective is to align with people that have their self interest. They have their their advance in mind, and so wh whatever that goal is, if my goal is to is to create a uh, a radio show, then I'm going to find people that create the that want to create the kind of radio show that I want to create. You know, if that's my goal, then then nothing else matters. And I'm going to surround myself with those types of people. So imagine if your life, you organize your life with people, um, around people that have your self-interest. And one of the, my good uh, mentors brought this uh, definition up to me when I was asking about, you know, how just getting organized. As, I mean, as an organizer, you know, so, so many different ways you can be pulled in. And he asked me, what is my self-interest? And I couldn't, you know, I didn't really give a convincing answer. He said, look up self, self-interest in the, in the dictionary. And so that, I think that that's very, very, very powerful um, action step and, so, and solution for everybody to do. Where's your line in the sand and what is your, your self-interest? Yeah, we had a... Um we went to an astrology discussion this weekend, and uh, the astrologer there uh, had powerful words expressing uh, the fact that the Caucasian man and, every, and basically every uh, most other man and, and cultures, ethnicities, are doing exactly what they should be doing. When they have a company, they hire their own people. When they have a store, they go support their store. And us as, as black people, uh, I, again, I reference a master teacher, Asa Hilliard, uh, us as black people are people with amnesia. We we don't know where we come from. We don't know who we are today, and therefore we don't know where we're going in the future. And so, um, without a foundation, you you can easily go and be persuaded to support other people's agendas. Or as you said earlier, one one aspect of the self interest definition that resonated with me is without regard for somebody else. So again, in your example, if I'm trying to go to a radio show, and here comes Joe Schmo says, "Hey, want to start a shoe company?" No, I don't <laughs> want to start a shoe company. I'm here to start a radio show. And as black people, our self-interest has to be, we're here to support one another. And when so-and-so come over and tell you to go work for them or, you know, try to get you not to trust your own people, you have to say that's not my self-interest. That's not for me. And there's a lot of talk nowadays about how integration is necessary. And I, integration is, is, how can I put it? integration is reality there is no way in shape or form can you live in this world and not integrate or be a part of it be an integral role in life however when it comes to your interest and it comes to your money you have to be able to do what, what brother malcolm experienced over when he took his pilgrimage you have to you have to realize that people will organize based off how they look what their culture is what their ethnicity is and that's what they mean by like attract like you know if you're doing something you're going to find other people doing it too. And um, we have to understand that. So uh, one of my solutions is to understand, to really understand life, to study life, to be a master teacher of life, and to understand what's going on, how it's going on, 
and who you are and understand your culture, understand that black people's history didn't start with slavery and get behind that. And quit thinking. Not only say quit thinking about it, but quit starting your your beginning. Even if teachers told you, even if your father teach you, even if pastors taught you, even if even if we teach you on some level something that doesn't really resonate with you, find out where it comes from. Like understand what this is all about, so that you don't base your foundation off off of a deceit. Because when you start your your your, your foundation off of something that is gonna gonna sink you, you are going to get sunken. I say. Mm -hmm. Uh, I agree with what both of you said. Um, and my, the ultimate solution, I think, for us as a people is, like they said, I mean, to get a foundation, some type of foundation, because we are the only people who don't have a foundation. Everybody else, you ask, you know, where's your lineage? Um, I, I would come from this, you know, the X clan in, in Japan, or, you know, I'll come from uh, I Ireland or Europe. Or, it's like us. I mean, we don't know. And because we don't know, Africa. right, Africa, a whole continent. <laughs> but um, because we don't know, I mean, and even that, some of us didn't come from Africa. Some of yeah, us was, was already here. But uh, A lot of us. Deep. Yeah, a lot of us. <laughs> but um, that's the thing. I mean, we, we need some type of foundation to base ourselves around because no matter how collective we get or how in unison or how much unity we have it's still going to be factions because we don't have a base so you know we might start together around black but then oh, i'm a christian or i'm a jehovah's witness so i can't associate with you and that's the thing like even you know with jehovah witnesses for example if you aren't a jehovah witness they won't associate with you like that like mm -hmm. it, it might be your own family member and if you get disfellowship from them they can't talk to you, period. So even if you live in the same house as them, if I'm a Jehovah Witness and you got this fellowship for something that they deem was a reason for you to be this fellowship, I'm not supposed to talk to you, period. Even though we live in the same house. I might be your father and you might be my son, but I can't talk to you. So if that's not brainwashing mind brainwashing control. and mind control, I don't know what is. And that's the thing. Like, we got to leave all of that stuff behind. Like, even with the Nation of Islam, like, that was good at that particular time. But now we have to elevate because even though it was good for that time and people got disciplined and all of this kind of stuff, it's still a paradigm and it's still a way to segment us uh, into certain factions. And we need to unify under something, something that's that hasn't been given to us by a conqueror or an oppressor. So, I mean, I like the so-called conscious community or whatever because it's like, you know, people are learning about their history. They're calling each other kings and queens and gods and goddesses. It's like that does something to your psyche or your mentality when you go from being the N-word and the B-word to now we're kings and queens and gods and goddesses. So that's what we need to do is just unify around something. So, I mean, if it's Kemet, that's fine. I mean, because why not? Um, you know, it's better than unifying around Christianity, which you are less than. And, you know, they give you rules such as thou shall not so-and-so, which it's saying that somebody's above you. But when you have those laws of my eye, is I have not or, you know, I will or I am. It's is uh taking responsibility shit you know just on, on a metaphysic tip too um we understand like there's people who not live in detroit a city of predominantly black people um we had some 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 family come up from uh the cincinnati area a few weeks uh, a few months ago um talking about how they, they're the few only conscious people in their community but because they decided to tell the universe i don't care i'm going to do this work anyway they ended up linking up with us or they found other people to link up with and so part of it is just focusing on what you want and deciding you're going to get it. And then the universe has a way of orienting um, that to occur. Law and of attraction. The law of attraction. Um, and um, so we, we have to understand that there, there's really no excuse. And, and it's making an excuse creates non-action. And so what I'm really expressing is to do something. Mm -hmm. Normalize to, uh, to do something. Mm -hmm. If you do what you've done, you know what you're going to get. And a lot of us are really, the fear really is the, is the fear of unknown. What happens if I decide to be different? But you know exactly what's going to happen if you do nothing. 
the same thing that you've gotten, that you're going to get the same thing. You're going to wake up in the next month and there's going to be a CNN report about a kid in Texas or a kid in California or a kid somewhere getting killed by the police. That's what's going to happen if we do nothing. And if that, if, if that isn't, as, isn't as scary, if you're more afraid of changing something than what we have already, then that's, that's the issue. So you have to change. The, the, the way the mind works with these addictions we have, with these concepts, these belief systems we have, is there's neuron network pathways in our brain that energy travels down. And the more it travels down that pathway, the higher, highly likely that you're going you're to have a hard time making energy go a different way. Just like anyone who studies electricity knows that uh, electricity flows down the path of least resistance. And so that's what's going on in our mind. So what we have to do is start doing things differently, even if it's seriously, even if it's eating dinner with your left hand or instead of going the quick way to work, take the scenic route or, you know, wake up uh different times of the day or just have a different meal or make you know just do something different so that your brain you, your brain will start to realize that you are in control and i feel like a lot of a lot of what we deal with uh in our communities are mental issues that we don't understand so i'm, I'm trying to give a little uh piece that really is a powerful tool if you if you come to use it is to just do something different don't don't do what you've done before and uh, have meaningful conversations with people one of the um one of the quotes, um, Malcolm X. You can I mean you can Google uh, Malcolm X's quotes uh, and have you know pretty much a uh, uh, you know a months a year's worth of discussions just on some of the things that he's uh, speeches that he said and just powerful quotes that he has. And so um, one of the action steps is really really committing to to understanding, overstanding, and understanding the depth at which media has has its claws in the minds and hearts and psyches of not just blacks uh, not just uh however you self identify the world you know and so i want to read this quote it says whenever a black man cares for his people empowering them and preaching truth they will always focus they the media uh will always focus on his mistakes his flaws and his contradictions. Uh, they want to. They want to illegitimize uh, his message, stop his progress, and hope for the people. And so, a lot of us, um, I would say, kind of have a feeling of this and aren't able to maybe fully articulate. We'll just say, you know, things that don't really empower us. You know, the system ain't for us, or um, so. Studying uh, Malcolm X's particular views on media and how he clearly, you know, breaks down breaks down um, how it's used, how it's a tool. It's, it's a tool for uh, tool for mind control, and, and he, he breaks it down in numerous, numerous ways, over and over and over and over again. It, it's the the point I'm getting at is that. Once you start studying people who have competently communicated these messages and see that it's the same message that's relevant today, it, it's kind of affirming and uplifting uh, that you don't have to find the words. The words are already there. You can kind of tweak it to what you, you know, maybe what you need for this relevant today. Um, but study the greats. Don't let their, their work, their, them, them have died. These, these people were killed. Like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and Marcus Garvey, these people were killed for their message. You know, whether you whether you fully, wholeheartedly, you know, align with every single thing, every iota of what they are, they've said or not, they 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 had conviction enough to give their lives for what they believed in, and that's more than a lot of people, you know, these days uh, can say. You know, so um, first, like I said, in, in our title is paying homage, and so where. You know, you deal face with an issue. You need to ask yourself, where has this happened before? Do you really think you're the first person in history, or history, or or in time, to have dealt with this issue? And if you don't think you are, then where has that happened, and how has it been dealt with? So I just wanted to share that. And we also understand what we're going through is a global global phenomenon. In the next Most break, definitely. we're gonna we're gonna show a little clip 
um, from something that happened in Israel recently with the Ethiopian Jews who, who live in inside of Israel, not the Palestinians, but these are Ethiopians who live inside the wall, so to speak. Um, because what we go through is, is, a, is, a, is a genetic attack, and we have to understand that uh, as we, again, get more into the information age, you can learn about all these things, and uh, it's, a, it's a gene. You have to understand our genes. That, that will help uh, understand what's, help us understand what's going on today, too, um, something that maybe Brother Malcolm didn't have access to in his day and age. But with the science ever evolving and learning, there's, there, there's, there's information now clearly stating that the native African man did not have Neanderthal blood in his in his in his genes, uh, or his genes didn't have you know he 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 had a different uh, makeup, and so some of this is also why today we see our our people being attacked and killed um, again because on again on a spiritual level same thing happens on a physical level thing people who who are working together to do certain things uh, find ways to to work together to do those things and. Um, our genes and our genetics have been have been uh, damaged on, on, a, on a quantum level the, over the last 400 years, and, and now we're at a point where we understand genetics and the quantum level. So we actually have the tools to heal ourselves, but we got to go and learn it because uh, classical physics does have a lot of application to today in this day and age. Uh, also, quantum physics has a, a huge. Uh, aspect to what's going on today but we're not giving it the attention it deserves so i feel again we need to really get back to learning and being scholarly and having real meaningful conversations with one another so that we can stop living falsely Shay, i think it's uh, about time for an, um another break this will be our last break and um we'll come back with more of this discussion on what uh let's talk about the future a little bit future too. yeah and, and and what how how do we see these um how do we see the future? You know, should nothing change? Uh, what do we see this, these, um, you know, our state today being? Uh, should nothing change? What do we see? How do we see the future? You know, it's a really, really interesting dialogue when we talk about the fork in the road. So we'll be right back after these uh, messages and uh, I'm going to say peace and power. Okay. Oh. 